Photoshopping is nothing new. Artists would alter their subjects to make them more flattering, and a prime example is of Princess Pauline Metternich. Here she is. She was painted as such, but in reality, looked like this. So, her actual portrait might have looked like that. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to take a look at Princess Pauline and her crazy story of engaging in a topless duel with another aristocrat over flower arrangements. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I recreate how individuals we read about might have looked in real life and also see what their deal was. I also untangle family trees. Lots more on my channel. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more recreations and let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. As one commentator had noted, she is not beautiful and was never young, but she is chic, and that's the worst of all. Furthermore, an aristocrat described her as ugly as a monkey, but she made success of it and called herself le signe à la mode, the fashionable monkey. Don't get me wrong, she was well aware of her plainness. This, however, did not deter her from becoming a trendsetter. You see, she taught Czech and French aristocrats to skate and influenced women to smoke cigars without the fear of losing their reputations. More than anything else, Princess Pauline was a fashion trendsetter. She was credited for the fame of fashion designer Charles Worth, who she introduced to Empress Eugenie of France in 1860. This was a time when Parisian women wore huge crinoline dresses that made them look like hot air balloons ready to take flight. Princess Pauline had Worth design her a form-fitting dress with a train for an opera premiere, yet again setting a fashion trend that became one of her famous eccentricities. It was said that she was often the very first one to wear a new fashion, which was secondly adopted by the Empress and then accepted and copied by the rest of society. Princess Pauline was born into a Hungarian noble family. Her father was a count, a furious rider, and a passionate horseman while her mother was a German princess and daughter of a state chancellor, and it seems she inherited both qualities of her parents. She was born in 1836 in Vienna, and by 1856, when she was 20, she got married to her uncle, Prince Richard. So this means her grandfather also became her father-in-law. At least, she didn't have to order new stationery though, right? Anyways, Richard was a serial cheater, but the marriage was happy enough to produce three daughters. And because Richard was a diplomat, the couple traveled to Berlin and Paris, and this is how she befriended the French Empress. So when the French Empire collapsed after France's defeat in the Franco-Prussian War in 1870, it was Pauline who sent Empress Eugenie's jewels to London in her husband's diplomatic bag. Princess Pauline, she was a woman you want on your side. In other words, she was a very loyal and feisty woman who at one time, with the Empress, slipped out of the palace dressed as men just so they could fulfill the Empress's dream of seeing Paris on top of an omnibus. So now let's move over to her rival and combatant number two, Countess Anastasia Kielmensek. It turns out Anna was a rival on the Viennese social scene. She came from a very wealthy Russian family in Bessarabia, but that didn't cut it when it came to measuring up against Austrian nobility. You see, Anna's husband, Count Eric, wasn't even Austrian. He was German and Protestant too. He was, however, the governor of Lower Austria, and this gave Anna the position to enter into Viennese society. Even with these social setbacks, Anna was determined to make fetch happen. She used her position to score seats on the boards of various charities and then set out to kick Pauline's butt at party planning. In general, the starchy nobility preferred Pauline, while the masses preferred Anna, according to the Marquise de Fontenoy at least. In August of 1892, Pauline and Anna had a disagreement over how to arrange flowers for the Vienna Musical and Theatrical Exhibition. Pauline was honorary president, while it seems that Anna was the acting president of the ladies' committee of the exhibition. You see, it wasn't about who had the authority to make the final decision. The flowers, it turns out, were just the straw that broke the camel's back. The real cause of their argument 
was who had the final say as the ultimate taste maker of Viennese society. Apparently, this was such a big problem for them that they decided to settle things with swords, fighting for first blood on the field of battle in Vaduz Liechtenstein. The duel was organized and officiated by one Baroness Lubinska, a fellow noblewoman who had a medical degree. She was the one who insisted they fight topless since she knew that clothing jammed into the wound often caused sepsis. Far better, she realized, to remove a potential contaminant and prevent any unnecessary deaths. Before you get too excited though, topless in this case just meant without their blouses. Both women kept their corsets and chemises for the fight, which is contrary to what later Victorian and Edwardians romanticized. According to the Los Angeles Times, which reported the duel in 1892, it was a real fight. Both were wounded, no hair pulling or plain scratching, but a duel with rapiers. Here's how it played out. Anna and Pauline exchanged a few weak feints. Then Anna went for broke and slashed out, giving Pauline a cut across the nose. Shocking at what she'd done, she clapped her hands to her cheeks. Pauline, sensing her opportunity, stabbed Anna in the arm. At the sight of blood, both women's seconds fainted. At this point, the men present, standing with their backs turned, rushed to help. Baroness Lubinska chased them back with her umbrella since the women were, after all, scantily clad for the time. Some sources have the injuries reversed, saying it was Pauline who cut Anna on the nose and then Anna stabbed Pauline in the arm. However, at the end, Pauline was considered the winner. In the aftermath, there wasn't really one. I mean, it was about flowers and nobody died, but according to the Pall Mall Gazette, their seconds asked the woman to make up immediately after the fight. If there's any lesson here, it's that you should sword fight topless to prevent unnecessary death. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more Austrian nobility, I have Empress Sissy's recreation and her family tree on my channel. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more recreations. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions. And I will see you in the next one.